Good morning, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is Genuinely Approachable Sudoku, and today we are solving Line of Succession by Philip Newman. This is a consecutive pairs anti-king Sudoku, and it is really important to remember that it has an anti-king rule because I failed to do this on my first attempt at solving it and got completely stuck and got really, really mad at Philip and had to go back and reread the rules just like we tell you guys to do all the time. But now I've got my head around the fact that this is anti-king, I should be able to show you how to solve it. So what do we have here? We have normal Sudoku rules, so replacing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outline 3 by 3 region. Then we also have some white dots in the grid. Those are consecutive pairs, so digits that are separated by a white dot have to be consecutive. In other words, one of them is one bigger or smaller than the other. And there is no negative constraint here. It's consecutive pairs, not just consecutive. Um, so that means that there may be other digits elsewhere in the grid that are consecutive that haven't been marked. So not all clues have necessarily been shown. You only know anything about the pairs of digits that are marked. And we also have an anti-king rule, which means that in addition to regular Sudoku rules, digits that touch each other diagonally, like these two digits, these three digits touching the two, also can't be the same. So we could not put a two in any of those because that would break the anti-king rule. So let's get started. So this two has to either go up or down. And if it went down, we would go two, then one, then have nowhere to go from here. So this has to be a three and then a four. Now, normally in consecutive pairs, this would now be able to also be a three because we're kind of going around a corner here and it doesn't see the other three. However, we have anti-king. It touches this three, so this has to be a one. And for the same reason, this guy can't be a three. This must be a five. Now, eight symmetrically here is going to go down rather than up. Eight, seven, six. This can't be another seven because it would touch our seven. So that's going to be a five. And likewise, this is going to be a nine. Four can't go down to three because there's a three in the region. So this is going to be four, five, six, which will go up to seven and down to three. Six can't go to five because there's a five right there. It's going to be a seven. And that's going to be five, four, and three. So that's going to fill those in. Now in this central box, there's only one way to make a set of three consecutive digits at this point to kind of squeeze it in between these digits. And that is going to be for it to be four, five, six. But there's a four here, so that can't be the four because it touches by Andy King. So that's a four, that's a six. Now we need to place a two and an eight. There's a two, so we're going to have an eight touching it. And there is a two. Now I'm going to turn my attention to these clues on this outside ring. This is something that I missed for a bit when I was uh, first looking at this puzzle. So we have two threes here, and we have a three here and a three here. And that gives us a hidden three in this region. That's the only position for a three. And there's a two already in the region. So the only other digit that's consecutive with three is going to be a four. We have a seven here, a seven here, and two sevens here and here. That gives us a hidden seven right there. And then there is an eight in this region. So we need a six to be consecutive with our seven. We have sixes here, 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 and here. That gives us a hidden six in this region. And that's going to be consecutive with a seven because we already have a five. And we have fours here, 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 and here. That gives us a four, which is consecutive with a three. Now we've used all of our consecutive pairs clues. So we are just solving an anti-knight Sudoku at this point, or an anti-king Sudoku at this point. Very critical difference there. So fours here and here. That places a four in row two right there. And we have sixes here and here. That places a six in row eight right there. The most complete looking columns now are these two. So I'm going to pencil in what I have here just to look at what I've got. And sure enough, that gives me a naked nine in this cell and an eight here and a five here. And so these are going to be one, two, five. And I have a two and five there. So that's a naked one and a two and a five in those two cells. And then here I need to place a six in this region. That'll be right there and a nine. And here I need to place a one and a four in this region. Now I'm going to check out these rows, two and eight. Those are nearly complete. Um, two, three, seven, and eight, actually. So I need a one, a two, and an eight to finish this row. This cell touches a two and an eight, so that's going to be a one. And then there's a two and an eight right there. 
Now in this row I need a 7, 8, and 9 to finish off. Here I already have a 2, 8 pair, so I could eliminate the 8. Here I can eliminate the 7 because there's a 7 in the column. Now in this row, I need a 1, a 2, and a 3. This can't be my 3 because it sees a 3 in its column. And that can't be my 1 because there is a 1 in its region. And now going across here, we need 2, 5, 8, and 9. These can't be 5 because they both see 5s in their columns. This actually is a hidden 5 in its region, making this a 2. That's going to be an 8, 9 pair. This is the only position now for 4 in the region. And then this has to be either 2 or 3. And because it touches a 2, it's going to be the 3. If we look up here, we can probably do something similar. We need 6, 7, and 9 to finish the region. And there's a 6 right there, so that's not a 6. So this is going to be our 6. Now, these rows are also nearing completion, 4 and 6. So let's take a look at them. Here I need uh, 2, 7, and 9. This can't be a 7 because there's a 7 in its region already. This can't be my 2. And this can be anything at this point. But I do now have a 7, 9 pair right there, which lets me pencil in the digits 2 and 8. I also have a 2 in this row that's appeared there as if by magic. So that places a 1 and a 3 in these two cells. And these guys are going to be from 2, 8, and 9. In this row, I need 1, 3, and 8. There's not a 1 there. there. That can't be 3 or 8. It touches an 8 by Andy King, so that's going to be a 1. And now this can't be a 1 or a 3, so it's an 8. And that 8 resolves this into a 2. And now I have a 7, 9 pair, making this a 2. That's a 1. And I need to place an 8 and a 9. The 9s can't touch each other, so that's my 8. That's my 9. And right here, I now have an 8 and a 9. Oh, that's the 8. That's the only digit remaining. There's a 7. 9 and 8 to finish the column. And 1 and 2 to finish the region. That's now a 7 and a 9. I have a 2 in this column already. And we can finish off with some classic Sudoku. 2 and 8. 9 and 2. And that is how you solve Philip Newman's line of succession. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. The link to solve it yourself is in the description of this video, and I will see you again in a few days.